According to Professor David Myers at the University of Michigan, who's been studying happiness longer than anybody else in history, from the 1950s to today, while we have tripled our wealth and skyrocketed our education, skyrocketed our longevity, our happiness has stayed flat. And if you zoom in on the data, guess what? Professor Gene Twenge at San Diego State University says that our anxiety rates are higher than ever before today. You've probably heard that stat before. If you've got teenage kids, college kids, you know that one in three college students has clinical anxiety. What about depression? The National Institute of Mental Health said that 13% of us had a depressive symptom before the pandemic began, and today it's 43%. Two or 300 of us in this room, right, can identify with having a depressive symptom. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy says that loneliness is the next big epidemic facing this country, and our suicide rates are now higher than ever before, 18 per 100,000. To put that in perspective, our murder rate is six per 100,000. It's never been lower if you spread it out over history, meaning that we are three times more dangerous to ourselves than anybody else is to us. So we're looking for happiness. We're Googling for it. We want to be happy more than anything else. We're not doing too well today. Why? Yell out some of the reasons why you think we're not happy as a population right now. And I've been told not to jump off this stage because I don't want to, it's bad for the people watching on video, but I brought some books here. So if you yell something out and you're close, I will whip you a book. Politics, social media. Politics was the first one. I really want to jump off this thing, but they, they said don't jump off the stage. So one, two, three, here's a paperback. Okay, oh, that's good, that's good. I, I tried not to throw the hard covers, like just dent your forehead. Politics we've heard, we've heard social media. What else? The news. Comparison, we're comparing our director's cut life to everybody else's greatest hits online, right? You have a really nice snack and drink outside, get your chocolate cliff bar, but you go on Instagram, someone's at a lobster buffet in the Maldives right now, right? Your, your snack suddenly stinks, your life suddenly stinks. Everything you've said is true, and on top of all that, we've also been growing up with this model, this model that our parents taught us when we were kids, which is, if you do great work, then you have a big success, and then you be happy. Does this sound familiar to anybody else? If you study really hard, then you get straight A's, and if you're East Indian, you become a doctor. If you work really hard, then you get promoted, and then you're happy. And if for anyone that has kids, it, we, we say this model to them, but come on, we want you to study hard, we want you to get into a good school, we want you to get a good job. This is common parental wisdom and it's completely, fundamentally broken. After reviewing over 300 studies on the science of happiness, positive psychology, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, this model is fundamentally reversed. It turns out we need to train our brains to be happy first. Think of happiness like a practice, like a habit that you can work on, that you can invest in, and then you do great work. Sonia Lebomirsky at Stanford University says if you could train your brain to be happy, guess what? You're 31% more productive. You have 37% higher sales. You are 300% more creative than your peers. And then what happens? The big success is at the end. Happy people are 40% more likely to get a raise or a promotion in the next 12 months, but also zoom out. Happy people live an average of 10 years longer, which I know sounds like total BS when you say that, but it, the study comes from Kentucky. Anyone here from Kentucky? Go Wildcats, right? The University of Kentucky researchers found that they looked at every nun who joined every U.S. convent in the 1930s and 40s. Same gender, same religion, same clothes, same food. Perfect lab rats, right? None of them smoke or drink or have sex ever. <laughs> Last time I said that, somebody at the back yelled out, not the nuns I know. <laughs> Point is, they're good to study. They looked at their autobiographies for when they entered the convent, if they used positive language, looking forward, eager joy, blessed life, they put those nuns in a pile called happy nuns. When they checked in on them in the 2000s, 
the ones that were happier in the convent lived an average of 10 years longer. 10 years is a lot of, a lot of days. Our lifespan here in North America, I'm in Toronto, Canada, but for all of North America, our lifespan's 30,000 days right now. 30,000 days, that's what we got. And if you can train your brain to be a little happier, you get 3,000 more. 3,000 more sunsets, bowls of ice cream, kissing your kids goodnight. <laughs>